We are interacting with computers for more than decades, and it was always one of our concerns that how we can create more intuitive and easy to use user interfaces. And the more we get advanced in the technology, we had more freedom in order to come up with more innovative ways to interact with the computers. The more we can remove the boundary between the digital world and the reality, the more intuitive and more natural way we will have in order to interact with the computers. So this concept that we can interact with the computer and digital world in our real environment remove a lot of physical limitation that we had with the old devices. A while ago, Apple released this new product, Apple Vision, which most probably all of us heard about it. This is not a really new innovation. We had the concept of augmented reality and virtual reality. However, the big difference is that they introduce a systematic way in order to design and develop application for these devices, which will help us to create a better experience for our users. So in this video, I'm gonna cover up the basic and the principles of the spatial design, which all the designers need to get familiar with it slowly. It is the future of the human and computer interactive system. So get sure to watch this video until the end. My name is Kia and here is Akimo. Welcome back to my channel. start this video I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. The statistic in my YouTube dashboard shows that the 90% of the viewers are not subscribing to my channel which might have different reasons but if you are watching this video right now it won't take you so much time to click on the subscribe button below this video. It will help me a lot to continue creating the content related to user interface and user experience design. Now without further ado let's get started. In order to understand the spatial user interfaces better we need to get familiar with the immersive spectrum. We can have our application in the shared space. Our application is going to be appear in the real environment that is around the user. In other hand, we can have a full screen experience which is going to impress the user the most. Our application can be run in the shared space or in the full screen or something in between. It's better we start our application in the shared space. In this way, the users are going to be aware about their environment first and then they have this freedom to switch to the full screen experience. Now let's get familiar with very basic user interface element that we have in the spatial user interface. And that's gonna be the windows. A window is basically a frame with a glassy effect which we can position our user interface element within that. We are using windows basically in every user interface. And that's bringing me to this point. We need to use familiar user interface element in order to create better experience for the users. We can count this technology as a really radical innovation, which means it requires a little bit of effort from the user side in order to get used to some of the changes. And if we use the user interface elements that the users are already familiar with, it will kind of ease this process for them. Now let's talk about the size of the windows. Unlike the other devices that we had so far, here we are free to choose any different size for the windows that we need based on our content. This means if our content need a little bit wider screen or wider window, then we can have kind of horizontal orientation for our window. And if our content need more vertical space, then we can stretch our windows in the vertical direction. Also, we can have a dynamic sizing for our windows, which means if we have some changes in our content which requires more space, then we can expand our windows in each direction that we would like to have. This is something new that we never had before in the devices that we are used to work with, such as smartphones, with the limited screen size. The next parameter is the scale. First point is, first point related to scale is that we need to use point in order to define the sizing measurement. We need to scale down the elements that are closer to the users and scale up the elements that are further from the users. And that's why we use point to keep all user interface elements in a proper sizing and proportions. And it's a good time to talk about the depths. The closer one element is, the smaller it should be. And it will give this feeling to the user that it's more interactive. And the further in one element is, we can make it a bit bigger. And it's more for observation and kind of impressing the users. We can use depths in order to create the visual hierarchy in the 3D environment around the users. One way to create the feeling of the depths was position of the element uh, in the 3D world. Another way is to use dimming. Dimming is one of the easiest way to create depths in the environment. Let's say this example, if we open one window, which is going to come up on top of the older window, 
we can dim the older window to push that element a little bit back and take the focus of the user and the new window. The next point is that we can have multiple windows for one application. But the thing is we should avoid having a lot of windows in the field of view of the users. The users might get frustrated from having a crowded environment around them. And also we need to get sure that the, all the windows are facing toward the users. Now let's talk about the positioning of the window. First of all, it's very important that we kind of position the initial window of our application in the center of the field of view of the user. In general, anything in the middle of the field of view of the user is going to grab the maximum attention from them which means we should get sure that we don't have any windows behind the user which user can easily ignore it and as I said all the elements should face toward the users we need to design our application in a way that it requires no movement from the users it can also have some accessibility reasons some people for some permanent or temporary reasons are not able to move so the application should be still usable here there is one important point that I would like to mention we should avoid anchoring the windows to the user's views, which will give this feeling to the users that the element kind of is stuck in front of their eyes. Instead of that, we need to get sure that we are anchoring the element into the environment. And we all know that the different users are going to use our application in different environments, which means we need to get sure that our application is going to work well, regardless the environment that the users are going to use our application in. And of course, we can use some effects in order to create more special experience for the users, such as sound effects, shadows, or animations. For sound effects, we can get benefit of having this 3D environment as a canvas for our application, which means we can use 3D sound effects in order to create more special experience for the users. For using animation in our application, we need to get sure that our animations are smooth enough and very predictable for the users. And for the shadows, there is one essential tip that we need to consider it. As I said before, different users are going to use our application in different uh, environments. Our shadow need to kind of be applicable uh, in different Friend environment as well. So these were some of the main principle and essential kind of information, uh, which is going to be a very good starting point. I took this information from the official video, which Apple has published uh, in the website. I found three videos which are going to be very helpful for the beginning of this journey. You can find the link to these videos in the description of this video. Uh, each video is around 20 minutes. And here I try to kind of give you a summary of all the information. Now I would like to show you how you can start to design a special user interface using the Apple official UI kit that you can find it in the Figma community. But before we go further with this part, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet and try to get in touch with me uh, in the comment section. You can ask any question that you have related to user interface design or any problem that you are facing. You can just easily share it with me in the comment section. Now without further ado, let's jump to the second part. So so in this part of this video, I'm gonna work on the case study in which I'm gonna create my very first spatial user interface inside the Figma. To do so, I'm gonna use the official Apple Vision OS UI kit in order to kind of ease my process. And then I will recreate the user interface of the Figma within the spatial environment. So bear with me until the end of the process. So first of all, I need to find the Vision OS UI kit inside the Figma community. So I'm gonna search for the Apple. Then I'm gonna open up the Apple official Figma profile. And here you can see that Apple already uh, published for Figma file uh, for different purposes like Mac OS uh, for the iOS 17 and uh, of course for the Vision OS. So I'm gonna click here and then click on the open in Figma. In this way, I'm gonna open this Figma file inside my working station. As you can see, we have a lot of design materials here components, templates. So it's a very good UI kit for kind of beginning the designing journey. So first thing that I need to do in order to start the designing process is that I need to publish all the component within this Figma file into a library to be able to use all the component within this Figma file all around my working environment. So simply I will click on the asset tab here and then here I will click on this icon. I can click on the publish button here and publish it as a library in my working environment. Now I can make a new Figma file and then go to the asset panel and again click on this book icon. Here I can see the list of all uh, libraries that I have in my working environment and I can click on the add and add that library to my Figma file. Here you can see that I have access to all components within that library in my new Figma file. So I can just use the component by dragging and drop it from the asset panel into my canvas. Okay, for the last step, I need to import all the styles, including the typography styles and colors and effect 
from the original Apple Figma file into my new file. I need to select all the style in the style panel and then use the combination key Control X or Command X to cut all the styles and then come back to the new file and use the combination key Control V or Command V to paste all the style in my local style again. So in this way I can import all the styles that I had in the previous Figma file into my new file. Here in this video, I'm not going to cover the detail of the designing process. I'm going to use the assets and components that we imported from the UI kit and just change some simple and small stuff inside those components. I'm going to just fast forward this process and then show you the result. I wanted to just share some of the basic principles of spatial user interface design. I hope you enjoyed this video and if it was so, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment for me. Let's learn together and see you in the next video.